Hi folks, Dr. Rob Savas. I am going to die of Alzheimer's disease. My mother's busy dying of Alzheimer's disease. My grandmother died of Alzheimer's disease. I have the Apple E43 gene complex. I am going to die of Alzheimer's. I am doing everything I possibly can to delay or negate that effect. The genetics loads the gun, the lifestyle pulls the trigger. And I'm doing everything I know how to, to prevent or delay that, not just for me, but I don't want to be a burden on my wife. Am I prepared? Have I prepared myself for that eventuality? Absolutely. I don't take care of my own finances. My wife takes care of my finances because I don't know when I may not be able to do so. I don't know when I make those mistakes. I've planned on caregivers to come into my home to take care of me because I don't want to live in some long-term facility, some sterile facility. I want to die at home. I want to wake up dead one day. But I've got to plan ahead for the worst case scenario. And I've had the luxury of being able to plan ahead. And I have this wonderful wife that supports me. But to that end, to that end, what's my story? What is my biologic story? How do I do that? Well, first of all, as I'm sitting here, and I've heard a lot of people, oh, what's a fat guy talking about carbohydrate? As I'm sitting here, I'm exactly down 107 pounds from my peak weight. As I'm sitting here today, I'm 201 pounds, as of actually 200 pounds and 0.8, but I call it 201, I don't use the points, but 201, BMI of 26.927. Not perfect, but down 107 pounds. And I explained to you where my weight, the excess weight comes from. Okay, I'll explain that to you in a second. I work out every day. I do emotion management purposefully every day. Something creative, something human connection wise, some physical activity, definitely spirituality and meditation. And I work hard on a healthy sleep cycle and a healthy sexual cycle. Very happily married. So I take care of my mental state to the extent I can. Do I fall off a wagon? Do I get anxious sometimes? Do I have the odd rising panic attack? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I see it and I redirect. That's the difference. I still begin to feel it. Then I say, aha, aha, I see you, my friend. This thing happened today, and this is why you're reacting this way. Let me go and employ one of my routine habits to figure out and to deal with that. So I've become much more aware of my own emotional state earlier. I recognize you. I see you. There's some issue that's driving you. Let me go for a walk. Let me do something. Let me talk to my wife. Let me calm myself down and then figure out and plan to deal with the issue. Much more effective as a human being because of that. Much less bothered by other people. Always used to perform for others' approval. Now it's nice, but it's not necessary. Because I can self-approve because of what I'm doing. So psychologically, I'm in the process of a massive change. Some people say more than less, but some days are good days, some days are bad days. And I recognize that. Okay, I'll die imperfect. Nutritionally, watch the previous episode. Okay, what I eat, when I eat, purposeful preemptive cycling of my food, almost never eating spontaneously because I don't trust myself. Okay, carnivore based, about 90 95% carnivore with an off ramp toward vegetables in a binary way. That's addiction. Okay, um, drink. My coffee, my tea, my bridge drinks, and water with electrolytes. Okay. My sporting ability, it's in the last video. Right now, focused on weights, but still can run pretty well. I'm over 60 years old. But here's my, here's my um, blood work. I've got to be cautious here. I hid it under another, another label. Because <laughs> the last time I did a video, other people could see my blood work. Or could see the name on, on this. This is mine. I've got a zero CAC score, by the way, zero CAC score a year ago, negative colonoscopy, and a low PSA. So if you're a guy, those are very important screening tests. 
get your CAC score at the age of 40, get a colonoscopy, maybe an upper endoscopy, uh, get a PSA, and then track those numbers. That's the screening that I strongly advise. Now, I do have to wear glasses. So let's go through this. White cell count, 4.6. Hemoglobin, 14.2. Platelet count, 268. Eosinophils, 0.4%. Okay? Those are just some of the basic numbers I look at. Blood sugar, right now on this blood work, 83. Normally run in the 80s. Okay? My electrolytes, perfectly fine. Calcium, 9.7. AST and ALT, 19 and 20. ALP, 43. Numbers are pretty good. Bilirubin, 0.6. So my liver numbers are great. Hi, folks. I don't eat on Mondays. Mondays are just no-calorie Mondays. Uh, I go from, Tuesday, from Sunday night all the way through to Tuesday night, 48-hour fast. It's just a routine. It's not anything heroic. It's become a routine in my life. But there are days when, I don't know why, but I'm just dragging. There's a metabolic reason. There's a psychological reason. I'm just dragging. I'm not white knuckling. If I'm white knuckling, I'm going to eat. But there are days when I just need a little bump. And the key thing about my fast days, they're not about calories. They're about not triggering insulin. They're about remaining in fat-adapted ketosis or the fat utilization phase to optimize autophagy, mitochondrial repair, brain cell repair. And during those days, when I'm struggling a little bit in the afternoon, especially in the evening when I would ordinarily eat, I use a ketone IQ to bridge me across. It very rapidly bumps up my ketone level, and those ketone levels suppress my appetite. They trigger GLP-1, they suppress my appetite. They just take the edge off that desperate need to eat. Do I use it every week? No. But some weeks I'm just dragging and this does not spike insulin. So your storage hormones are flat. Ketone IQ works to bridge across that moment where you need something and you stay in fat utilization phase for 48 hours, optimizing metabolic recovery. Oh, here we go. BUN and creatinine. BUN is 20. Creatinine 0.81. Used to be much higher. Those are protein turnover numbers. But that's ideal for me. C-reactive protein, less than 0.3. Highly selective C-reactive protein, less than 0.3. All the proteins in my liver numbers are good. TSH. 1.22, free T3, 3.2, free T4, 1.2. All pretty good. Ferritin, 51. Iron, 78. Now here we go. My LDL level. Well, let's start with total cholesterol. Total cholesterol, 241. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's my LDL. LDL 241. Total cholesterol 322. Triglycerides 53. HDL 78. That's my profile. That's all I need. Okay. Now, why, if I'm mostly carnivore, is my cholesterol and my LDL relatively low? High for any other doctor, but relatively low. And why do I have this extra weight on me? Because I drink milk. Because I drink milk. And because every now and then I'll eat some starchy vegetables. Why? To trigger insulin. Got a whole video coming up on the importance of that in human beings. And the reason I'm not 100% carnivore is because of insulin suppression. And these lipid numbers are excellent, in my opinion. It's not just because it's me. They're excellent. But my cholesterol and my LDL are not super high because they're regulated by insulin. Very important. So what is my insulin level? And again, it's not about single numbers. My numbers are characters in a storyline. Okay? Characters in a storyline. So we see the absence of the inflammatory numbers. We see the good protein turnover numbers. We see the good lipid numbers. Now let's look at my glucose numbers. As I said, blood sugar was 83. Insulin level, 3.4. Lowish, 3.4. Now, this was 15-hour fasted blood work, okay? 
15 hour fasted. Glucagon, 41. Glucagon's high, insulin's on the low side. Blood sugar is 83. So that insulin is adequate to control my blood sugar, but my blood sugar is being made by glucagon, either through gluconeogenesis or through the release of fat from my fat cells. How do I know that I'm fat utilization stage? Because my HDL is 78. See how that works? Okay. My vitamin D level, 77. My range there is 40 to 80, not super high. Vitamin D level, just fine. B12, 739. Pretty damn good. Folate, 553. So we're good there. And those two things are numbers that I look at instead of looking at homocysteine and all the other numbers. Let's see if there's any more here. Who? <laughs> Testosterone, 717. It's pretty damn good. And that's not, doesn't, it's not about my manliness, that's about insulin uh, sensitivity. So fully insulin sensitive. Folks, those are my numbers. I take no medication. Blood pressure, 110 over 60, 110 over 70. We check it Monday through Friday. Heart rate, usually in the high 50s, low 60s. Sinus rhythm. Occasional PVCs, but sinus rhythm. What other metrics do we monitor? So I monitor that with an oxygen saturation monitor. I monitor my blood pressure. And I'll play with my heart rate in the gym. So I let that heart rate go high. And then when it breaks 100, we do the next rep. So there's no rest, major rest period. But I kind of like that. My own little stress test. Don't monitor my ketones at home. Occasionally, I wear a CGM. You'll see um, a report from my CGM uh, on one of the pictures I'm going to show you. Weight 201, BMI 27. A little heavier, but down 107. The two supplements, I take no medication. No medication whatsoever, okay? Def <laughs> definitely no statin. I take two supplements, sometimes three in the winter. I take 2% glucose iodine. I'm six foot tall. I use a four drops. My whole family takes iodine because we don't use iodized salt. I use Redmond salt. Occasionally, I'll use a ketone IQ. I use a lot of salt in my diet. And I take, because of my um, Alzheimer's risk, I take 500 milligram DHA fish oil every day and occasionally some MCT oil in my coffee. That's my Alzheimer's prevention. During the winter, not every day, but probably every other day, 5,000 units of D3K2. I travel with aspirin. I use it when I travel. I use it if I get sick. But I do not use aspirin every day because I have no arrhythmias and I have a normal CAC score, a zero CAC score. If I had higher numbers, I would be taking an aspirin. Folks, that's how I roll. I'm over 60. I work at it. Still going to die of Alzheimer's, most likely. Comments. Leave your comments. I'm not superhero. I'm not a superhero by any means. I came from a really bad place. I came from an ugly place where my highest fasting insulin was 87. Very obesogenic, very hyperinsulinemic. I've worked hard at this. I struggle, but I love every day. If I can do this, you can, because I sure as hell am not a perfectionist. In fact, the last thing I'll leave you with, the last thing I'll leave you with, accept the effort, not the outcome. Be proud of the effort, not the outcome, because perfectionism is a form of self-abuse. I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of my own imperfections, and I work at them, but they are me.